Hello and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about homeschooling in the state of New York and we're going to start at the HSLDA website and if you have legal concerns you can join them and they'll help you with your legal questions and legal concerns and I think it's very inexpensive. I think it's about 10 or 12 dollars a month and I'm not an attorney and I can't help you with those sorts of things but I can read what it says and you can go I don't know when you're watching this but you can go and see if they have any updated information and it says on their website that you must submit a notice of intent to homeschool to the district superintendent by July 1st, the beginning of the school year, yearly, or within 14 days of establishing your new homeschool program during the school year. And I'm not going to read all of this because it's quite a lot of reading and I will not be able to finish the video because I have so much I want to include. But it, it talks about COVID protocols and the Office of Homeschooling and processing paperwork so they recommend that you submit your notice of intent via email and they give you an email address. It also says you must submit an individualized home instruction plan, an IHIP. Each school year you must submit an IHIP by August 15th or within four weeks of the re receipt of the IHIP form from the school district, whichever is later, the IHIP form requires you to submit your child's name, age, the grade level, a list of your syllabi, curriculum materials, textbooks, or plan of instruction, dates for submission of quarterly reports, and the name of whoever is given the instruction. The IHIP form can be downloaded below. If applicable, your IHIP should include, along with the subjects to be covered, a statement indicating that your student will be meeting the compulsory education requirements through full-time study at least 12 hours a semester at a degree-granting institution. The IHIP sounds very scary, very frightening, because you're like, what is a syllabi if it's not the curriculum materials and the textbook or the plan of instruction? So you might be very frightened, but don't be frightened, because a lot of people, it says, or plan of instruction. See, a list of your syllabi, curriculum materials, textbooks, or plan of instruction. So don't be frightened because a lot of people are just listing their books and printing out the contents of the books or the website and printing out the contents from the website. I'm, you know, as a homeschooler, I'm not limited to, I create a plan of how I'm going to homeschool, the resource materials that I'm going to use for my students, but I'm not limited to that. I have the right as a homeschooler. If someone comes to me or I'm a, if I'm a member of some homeschool support group and someone brings me this book that they are offering me to use and this book is better than the books I'm using or I find a website that's better and that I love and my students love more than the one they're using, then I might use that if I feel that's to, going to benefit them educationally. So I am not limited like the public schools are limited in my decisions. And I might mention that, hey, this is my plan, but if something better comes along that I can, and I'm going to search for resources. I am constantly searching for resources, resources to teach my students, to give them a better education. And I feel free to use those. So this is my plan and it might change. And if it does change and they use other things at the end of the year, I'll let you know what they use. But that's, you know, and I plan to let my students learn at their own pace. I am not going to limit them and say, oh, you have 45 minutes to do English, 45 minutes to do math, and then the bell is going to ring and you're going to be interrupted mid-thought and have to go right to the next one. I'm going to let them sit there and finish their thoughts. So they might be 40 minutes in math and 50 minutes in English. It might it might change day to day so that they get to finish their train of thought and they it's not going to be exact and precise and this is my plan for instruction for my students is to 
you know, let them, if they're in the middle of an essay, I'm not giving them homework. I'm going to let them finish their essay. And I might teach them more hours during the day than you expect to, but I might give them breaks, you know, with music videos or something that helps them to relax and sing along while they're learning. So, because I, I'm not limited. I, I don't have to, you know, teach the same way that you do. So, I wouldn't be afraid of this. Don't be afraid of this. You'll look at look at the way other people do it in the samples. You can turn it in if they don't like it. Have them, you know. But you can give them the list of the books, the, the names of the books, um, and, and then list the contents or where it shows the curriculum in the books, usually in the contents. And you can print that out. And put that with it. So don't don't be don't be frightened of such a thing. And if you have legal concerns or legal questions, you can contact the HSLDA and become a member and ask them what their thoughts on and get assistance with simple things like that. Because like I said, it's only like twelve dollars a month. So you have to comply with the day, hour, and subject requirements. You must maintain records of attendance each year demonstrating that your child's attendance meets the substantial equivalent of 180 days per year. Attendance records are only required to be submitted to the school district upon request of the superintendent. In addition to the day requirements, homeschool students are required to meet hourly attendance requirements. And you can read that. I don't want to read everything to you. And I will click on these so that you can read them. So, because I don't want to read every little detail to you. And you might want to create a binder or a portfolio. And I will tell you some of the things that might go into a binder or portfolio. And maybe you can mention that or attach some of those. But, okay, so. If you're creating a portfolio at the beginning of the year, you might go on the internet and find assessment tests or placement tests for your students to take to see what level they're on. You know, they're, they're going to make simple mistakes. That's not the level they're on, but you'll see when they're having difficulty. And then you can put those in your portfolio or your binder, and that helps you create a plan for the year what you're going to teach your students. You print out your state homeschool laws, put the date on them, throw them in your binder, copies of any forms that you file with the school. And if you can get proof of that as well, put that in there. A couple of calendars or attendance records, you know, one attentive plan. And even school has things come up for snow days. And then the actual days that they have school, you're going to want to fill that out. When you're brainstorming your favorite resources on the Internet or your favorite workbooks, textbooks, whatever, you might want to create a list of the things you're going to need for homeschooling, including those. And then you might want to create an actual list of the resources that you're going to use. Put them both in your binder because later you might decide you want to use a different one or next year or halfway through the year. So, or you might want to add into your curriculum or you see that they're able to finish this pretty quickly. Maybe you need other resources to add on. Um, your list, your online curriculum and the, your workbooks. You might want to print out the contents from web pages like iXL and workbooks to show the curriculum, the list of activities they're going to be doing in each subject and throw that into your portfolio or your binder, the list of field trips you plan to take. And then you can highlight them or create one that shows the list of field trips you actually took. Sample work. And you might want your student to create a binder and you to have a binder so that they can look back at their work. And then if you have to turn one in, you know, if you're worried about not getting it back, you might want to have two of them. Where a student might want to showcase their best work and look back on the year and see their best work, a parent might want to show progressive work or a variety of skills. And you can, like if they're doing multiplication, you can time them doing a sheet of multiplication and then a month or two later, time them and see how much better they're doing. And that shows their work progressing, but also a variety of skills, you know, or doing an outline of an essay and then later on writing that essay shows how they're progressing. Um, it might be showcasing their best work, though, depending on how they write the essay. Uh, proof of any field trips taken if you 
get a leaflet, a flyer, you write the date on it, maybe a photo, maybe them writing a paper about their favorite thing on the field trip or what they learned. You might want to throw a weekly schedule into the portfolio. A daily log of activities. And that would be, you can do that in a notebook and then write it, type it up on a word pad and email it to yourself and print it out every now and then and put it in your portfolio. And it would be like day one or day two or day three, you know, you number the days. So you put day one, the date, um, the time, the subject, the name of the workbook or the website they're using, and the activity that they're doing. And, and then you might want to carry that through. And the last, at the end of the day, the time they start and the time that they end. And you're not going to be specific. You know, you're not going to, you're not going to want to be so strict that you interrupt them mid-thought to go to the next subject. And if they're working on IXL or all-in-one homeschool, they might be working at their own pace, so they might spend a little bit more time on one subject than they do on the other. They might spend more time on reading than they do at math. Some students, what takes somebody else a half an hour, 45 minutes to do in math, another student might do it in 10 minutes. So, you know, they work at their own pace, and that's just how that happens. But keeping a daily log of activities shows you if you're counting the days, you've got day one, day two, day three, then you can see the dates, then you can see what they did. And there's proof of that. There's proof of the activities that they did. So if they need that later on, you have that. And if you want to make notes of that, you're creating this and this is what you're going to include, you can. Um, if you give them spelling tests or any type of test during the year, self-evaluations, you might want to might make notes and assess them as they're doing their work. You might want to write, oh, they learn easier this way, they learn better this way, you know, listening, hands-on, watching videos, doing um, this workbook or doing IXL. You might want to list how they learn better and have them do self-assessments so that you have a better understanding of where they're coming from. You might want to um, every six to eight weeks write an assessment of oh they're behind in their reading but they have a positive attitude you want to throw a positive spin on anything they're having difficulty with you don't want to put negatives you don't want to because they're going to look back on this and you want them to be proud of their work and at the end of the year say they go up five reading levels you can put they went up five reading levels and we think it was because of their positive attitude and hard work and that could be part of your assessments you know and if you take if you give them standardized tests yearly you're going to want to put that in your binder if they do volunteer work you might create certificates and have other people where they do volunteer work fill out the certificates for you or sign them for you Maybe if they take classes outside art classes at a museum or things like that, you can create certificates. When they go to the library, if you create a list of library skills you want them to learn, you can create certificates and you can put those in the binder. Any contacts you have with emails, um, phone numbers and addresses for the school or homeschool support groups, you can throw that in your binder. If they do career study field trips, you might have them create a list of questions and go over them with them about uh, the kind of education that people needed, their daily activities, um, their skills, maybe how they use the computer for presentations or emails, how they, if they have to maintain schedules, their problem solving skills, their leadership skills, if they have to meet deadlines. You can have the students write the answers or see if you can record audio or even video so that the student can go over it later and have the student write a paper about it. And this might help them choose their career and know how much education they'll need for it, or it might even just help them with interviews later and their communication skills. But this will be in your portfolio in your binder and you can create, you know, you can let them know this is what we're doing. And this says you have to file quarterly reports to this district superintendent each quarter and they need to re include the number of hours in, of instruction during the quarter. A description of the material covered in each subject and a grade or narrative evaluation in each subject and you get to grade your students you know you can say hey I'm grading them not on you know I'm not comparing them to other students I'm I'm grading them on the fact that 
I'm seeing them, they're there, they're not giving me a hard time, and they're, they're doing the best that they can. And I get to choose their grades. Hey, you know, I'm not, you know, if you think, you know, you're not going to, it's just, I don't even know how to put that into words. But some people, when they grade their students, they grade them on participation. They grade them on other things in your homeschooling. You know, you're not used to giving grades and you can look at the different ways that you can create grades and you can create grades by them being there and participating and they're learning their communications and how well they do, you know. You can just the fact that they're sitting there writing the essays and they're taking part and they're trying. So you get to choose how you want to grade and how you want to evaluate your students. And you can look at how other teachers grade them and some of them grade them like music classes and things like that just on being there and singing and participating. So that's up to you. Don't be afraid by what these people say. And if you need a membership from HSLDA to call them, call them and ask them legal questions. It says quarterly report forms are available to HSLDA members below. Assess your child yearly. You need a yearly assessment and they, there's a thing where you can click on it. It's required and it says in grades one to three you can have your student take standardized tests or you can choose to submit a written narrative evaluation for your students. In grade four to eight, standardized tests is required at least every other year. Excuse me. <laughs> Sorry about that. With a written narrative evaluation available as an option in the years you do not use standardized testing options. So, for example, you could use a written narrative evaluation in grade four, but you would need to use a standardized test in grade five and so on. Standardized testing is required every year in high school. I love standardized tests because Often homeschoolers score so much higher in standardized tests, but that's up to you. Those are your options, and you can go over them, and you can choose how you want to. And it gives you more information. So you can read that and decide how you want to do that. And there's the list of that. I don't want to read all of this to you. I have so much to go over that I don't want to lose my voice so it also says a written narrative evaluations may be conducted by a certified teacher a home structure peer group review panel or other person with consent of a local superintendent so there's that and this was just to show you because people are like what is a syllabus and this shows you what a syllabus is, but you don't have to follow what this says, you know. There are no prerequisites to this. You know, it depends on the age of the student, but this one shows engagements hours. Below is an example that you may see in your course syllabus of a table, but we you know, it shows different things. You know, you might have free writing and journals. You might have an exam. You might have them writing essays. You might have them creating posters, you know. So this just shows you. And like I said, if you want to see this and read it, you can. Grading and evaluation. It says these factors will vary depending on the professor and the course you're taking. So this gives you examples, and it shows class attendance, homework. We don't have homework. Project, quiz average, exams. So you can see if you want to give them a grade pointing system using examples of other people. So you can, you know, And you can go online and see how your local school near you does it. But don't don't let them overwhelm you or frighten you. 
And this is the New York State Education Department. And you can print out what this says. And you can go in and see. They have questions and answers. So you can go read their questions and answers. And these are important to have. So I would read over these. I don't want to read all of these. But this might help you. And I will scroll down. And you can pause it and read it. And that way it's here but you can go on to their website and find it as well and like I said if you feel like you might need legal advice in the future or you already have questions you might want to join HSLDA and ask them the questions that you have because that's what they're there for and this right here says, are parents required to submit more than a list of textbooks in the IHIP to comply with the requirements? And it says, it must include for each of the required courses either a list of syllabi, curriculum materials, and textbooks to be used, or a plan of instruction to be followed. So you can, a different alternative may be used for different subjects. While a list of textbooks may be submitted, it is reasonable for the district to require more than the name, publisher, copyright date, and author's name. If they're not familiar with the textbooks, they might want to print out the the curriculum and the contents, the activities that they're going to be doing. So that might help you, but don't feel overwhelmed. It says the total number of hours of instruction per quarter must be documented on the quarterly report. It is recommended that in secondary grades, hours per subject be included in each quarterly report. So you can read this. Because it's once you start reading the questions and answers, you'll find it's not near maybe as frightening as it might have sounded at the beginning. Because a lot of people say, oh, i got to include the syllabi. I better go Google search. What is that? And you're like, oh, I've never written that. Oh, that sounds so difficult. So you can see that a lot of people have had questions. And maybe this will help get you some answers to some of your questions. Next page. Oh, this is um, the form. So you can look at it. You can find it. You can download it. This is from year 21, 22. I don't know when you're looking at this. So you can see there's the form. So maybe that will help you some. And here's a quarterly report. And this is a calendar. And you can print two of these. You know, you might... I don't, even public schools have snow days, so... I might put my plan. This is my plan for the days, you know. And then if something comes up, then you fill it out what actually happens. And I thought I would throw this in there too. So if you need it, you know where to find it. If you need the links or to click on the links and read, read more about it, you can go there to read it. So hopefully that helps you. And this is a good place to find assessment tests at the beginning of the year. You know, you're you want to see what they learned, what they absorbed last year, and where they're at. And this has even if it even has Bible, diagnostic test, math, language, history. You can go here and you can download these. And I will show you one of them. And you can see, oh, if they made simple mistakes, you can go over it. And you can see where they're really struggling and what level they're at. So it helps you create a plan of what you're going to teach them. And you can throw that into your binder or your portfolio to show why you started where you started. Because this is the level that you're at. 
They don't have to be taught at the, you know, you don't have 25 to 30 students being taught at one level. You get to teach them at their own individual levels. So you can find different assessment tests to go over with them. And I love this because this is just incredible. And then if you're new to homeschooling and you're trying to brainstorm what you're going to need, this right here may help you create a list. You can see the headings where they say books and general homeschool supplies and literature. And you can create your own list like that. And you can list your favorite books that you have that you might be using your favorite websites that you might be using and then you might create a list of the ones you're actually using or highlight the ones you're actually using and then next year or halfway through the year you might be looking back and saying oh I want to add this in or oh I want to use this so that you have a list of the ones that were your favorites and then you have the list of the ones you're using so you can see those and it also shows you like educational toys and brain games like chess sets and you know like categories and you might have work that into there here and there you know you know I'd be playing Yahtzee to help them with their multiplication tables you know so playing Scrabble you know this shows you ideas for field trips and things like that so you might want to create your own list similar to that and throw them in your portfolio or your binder uh, this is another attendance record that I found in North Carolina that I just loved but in case you want to use it for yourself and put it in your binder and this is ixl.com and I think it's like $20 a month but what I love about this one is how easy it is to print out the contents and the you can see the actual activities the students are doing so if you're creating your daily log and you put in day one the date the time the subject and then you put like math, I excel, and then you go to put the activity that they're doing, you can put their activity was even or odd or skip counting or skip counting puzzles. You know, you can see what the individual activity is that you're doing. And you can print this and throw this in your workbook. I mean, you're not your workbook, your binder, your portfolio. So you have the curriculum and the activities you're going to be doing for the year. And this is Khan Academy. And it says that it is free for everyone, everywhere. And it goes from pre-K all the way up to college classes. And I've heard excellent reviews. So, And that's another thing. When you go to choose your curriculum online, you might want to look at the reviews. And have your student try them out and see which ones they like. This one's all-in-one homeschool, and it's, it's, it's free at this time. You go to a link, they try to get you to donate. You can click cancel and do it for free. And then later on, you might want to donate because you might find you love it. And it has Bible and things like that. They have their daily set schedule, or they used to. And then if you want to do Bible, you could. it's separate. So you have to click on it separately, or that's the way it was. So, And it's fun because it uses different websites. So you click on reading, and it'll take you somewhere else. You click on history, and you might go somewhere else and watch like a Paul Bunyan video. And you can have discussion with your students. So you can put, they watch this video, and we had discussion, you know. So it's just fun. And this is an idea. It's not full curriculum, but it. It might add to it, and you might have heard of it, but you maybe you didn't realize that it taught so many subjects. So, and it's songs and music, so they they sing it and they memorize it, and they learn it very well, and they might remember it even when they're older. And you can find them on YouTube playlists, so you can use this for free. And it's got um, you can see grammar, science, economics, history, math, and civics, and some of them. Are, they came back, you know, some of them are from the 70s or some of them from the 90s, but kids still love them. So you can check this out. There's a subject. You can learn multiplication. And it also teaches you about adding and different stuff. And here's Grammar Rock. And you can see how they learn the parts of speech. And they get them down because they memorize the songs. I know people that still know these songs from when they were a kid and they're like in their 50s. And so... And this one teaches them about American independence and emigration and voting for the president, Declaration of Independence, Revolutionary War. You can see all the things. There's science rock and there's earth rock. So you can see the different things that they learn here. And it, it's so much. And there's money rock that teaches them about 
personal budget and that might be something you want them to learn so you can see it's such a great resource and if you're making lunch and you need a break or they need a break from what they're doing you can have them listen to some videos and you can write that down in their daily log this is what they were studying rainforest you know this one is under the home dot org and i love this it is so easy to use so you want to teach them poetry and you click on kindergarten poetry and we'll go to lesson three so you can see and it has a little video with a little reading so it's so much fun and then you can go up so these are all kindergarten on this page but so you can go and check this out and see if you want to utilize this And this one is 54 spelling word lists. And this one also, you can see it's best ed lessons. You can go on there and check it out. It has a variety of things. You can click on the different subjects and see if there's something you want to use. And if you need a spelling word list, you can click on it easily and find them there. And this is just another resource for you. And this one is Mr. Nussbaum. And you can see how to spell that on the upper left. And I love this one. It covers a variety of subjects. And if you're trying to teach them about history or civics or different places and you're needing different resources, this is just has so many resources. It has games and history. And you might want to be teaching them about, you know, the state of New York. And you're, where can I find something like that? And it shows math and graphing. And so it's got so much. And you can check this out and see if there's anything in it that you might want to use for your students. It's interesting. I see New Jersey and North America. But there's New York right there. So there's another excellent resource for you. This is ck12.org and students. So you can go on that and check this one out as well. And this one's really easy to use and it also has a variety of subjects. So if you're looking for things to throw in there, there it is. It's photography. So you can go check and you can learn about different countries there. This one is, this one has like 5,000 books. And if they have different editions, they're here. So you can click on one of them if you want to read a book and there it is and if you decide you want to go to the library you can create you know a list of library skills and give them a certificate of achievement for the library skills but if you don't or you're at home you're just looking for books to read with your children without having books all over the house because you probably have enough this is an excellent resource and this one, she has um, New York State required paperwork, but I've already shown you those, but you can go check out her website if you like. So, and then another thing that you might need if you're homeschooling, you might want to join a homeschool support group. Um, some of them are free and some cost money. They might have answers to questions that you had never even occurred to you yet. Because maybe they've been homeschooling for years and they have a vast amount of knowledge. They might be sharing books and maybe you need books. Or maybe you have books you want to donate to other homeschool families. And you're wondering, well, where can I find another homeschool family to help out and donate to? You could probably find this with the homeschool support group. And I, I've heard co-ops might be difficult and too much work and overwhelming to some people. But if you have a homeschool support group, maybe, you, maybe they're going on field trips together. Or maybe they're meeting in the park, you know, somewhere to have lunch or, or do activities together so that the students spend other time with, you know, other students that are their age that are being homeschooled. So you can, you know, check this out and see if you want to join one or not. So anyway, it's a lot and hopefully I covered a lot. And like I said, I'm not an attorney, so I can't really answer legal questions, but you can check out HSLDA and you can join if you have legal concerns. You know, sometimes you, maybe you just feel like you might have a problem and you, 
So anyway, there's so much. I, and I wanted to throw in some websites that have educational materials, but there's so many of them. You can see how many tabs I have open that I just couldn't put them all in here because there's so many resources out there. So anyway, I hope that this helps someone out there with their homeschooling. And feel free to leave comments. I appreciate you watching my video. And have a great day. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.